All right, so I've got a brief update to the Patreon saga, and I want to lay out my thoughts on one particular paragraph. So, here we go. So, quick recap. Patreon uh, expelled uh, a user by the name of Carl Benjamin, or his uh, internet moniker, Sargon of Akkad, a while ago. And it led to a revolt of sorts from creators on both sides of the political spectrum. And now we have an article written by the New York Times, the Grey Lady, the paper of record, about the ongoing saga. And the general tenor of Patreon has been kind of um, fuck you-ish, if you will. I don't know how else to phrase it in um, a, a clearer way. I'm only going to focus on one small part of the article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but there is a link below to the article if you want to have a look at the um, whole piece. So the piece that I want to talk about is Patreon's stance on the relationship between the creators and the users, and also how speech is policed on its platform. Now, there are a lot of interesting nuggets in the New York Times piece. You have Jacqueline Hart, the representative of uh, Patreon, saying that if Sargon had fully apologized for what he had said, that maybe he'd be let on the platform. As far as I'm concerned, the problem with Patreon isn't so much that it has standards by which it holds its users to account or that it expects a certain kind of behavior from its users. It's that its terms of service uh, are opaque. They're very vague. You could read the terms of service in one way and interpret them in such a way that Sargon of Akkad was not breaking the rules. But what we didn't know was that those weren't all the rules. There are a set of unwritten rules uh, for Patreon and how users are to behave on the platform. That is unacceptable. Uh, you have to present very clear rules, otherwise people won't know how to behave on any given platform. Business can't be conducted. It's, it's just really inefficient, and it's also, um, for lack of a better phrase, it's tyrannical. Because if you leave rules up to the whims of people, then there really are no formal rules to challenge. Uh, there's no procedure, there's no process. So um, what, what can you do in the face of rules that have uh, no limit? That's where I stood at the time of my last video. That was sort of the big thing for me. But with this New York Times article, there's one paragraph in there that I want to read because I think it's amazing. And I think it reveals the true nature of the people behind uh, the trust and safety team on Patreon. Patreon takes a highly personal approach to policing speech. While Google and Facebook use algorithms as a first line of defense for questionable content, Patreon has human moderators. They give warnings and reach out to talk to offenders, present options for education and reform. Say what? Some activists hope this will become a model for a better and kinder internet. What the fuck is that? They give warnings and reach out to talk to offenders, presenting options for education and reform? This is not about setting forth clear and enforceable rules. Instead of setting out clear rules and saying, these are the things you can say, and these are the things that you can't say, and then letting the platform kind of ride, you know, ride the wave, if you will, to see where it goes, where it takes us, they are actively policing, threatening, and then terminating that account unless they get reformed. I mean, has anybody seen Pink Floyd's The Wall? And I don't want to be interacting with a platform that treats me like a child. And B, take a position that uh, you need to be changed in order to be worthy of using our platform. Seriously, who in the hell do they think they are? It's not us who should be worthy of them. It's them who should be worthy of us. We are the creators. We are the ones who make stuff. And maybe we say stuff that's unacceptable now and again. But the point is, is that we are the ones making the content that drive your platform. And it's not up to us to be worthy, especially when rules aren't written down. You can't scale that if you have rules that don't make sense. I mean, it's just disappointing. It's so disappointing to be talked to like that. You have to reform. You have to be educated. Go fuck yourself, seriously. So I'm deleting my Patreon at the, in the new year. Um, big thanks to the people who have supported me there. I, I have an independent link to a PayPal button where you can continue to support me on that platform. And I know that it's not much better because I also know that PayPal and Stripe are behind some of the deplatformings of some other people and other platforms. But it's the best that we can do for now. I'm looking into using coin payments to accept uh, crypto directly through uh, YouTube, if possible, on a monthly subscription basis. I don't know if that works. And I'm going to be on Creative Chain soon enough. But I think it's time that creators start looking for alternative platforms and really committing to platforms where you can't be deleted. 
Uh, I think that education and reform is something you have to pursue on your own, um, and it's something you've got to want. To do it in this way, to accept this sort of education and reform, as Patreon puts it, is something you should never ask of the artist. That is indicative of totalitarian thought. All states that were like this, where they demanded people to be a certain way, were horrible places to be. And I don't want to be on platforms that mirror the sort of a thought policing that Patreon is doing. Give me clear terms of service. Let me know what I can, I cannot say, and let you know. Let the service roll. Let it go. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, click that subscribe button. Find me on Steam and sign up for my PayPal subscription. It's only one dollar a month. It's like my version of Patreon, except it's simpler and way cheaper. You get access to my private Telegram channel, early access to all my work, live streams, exclusive content, and finally, you get what you really came here for: access to moi. See you there.